you're still watching The Breakfast, Nigeria Labour Congress has cautioned the National Assembly leadership against resurrecting or passing the Water Resources Bill into law because of the danger it portends to national unity. The Congress said the National Assembly should not ambush Nigerians by surreptitiously bringing back the bill, which seeks to vest the control of all water sources across the country in the president. Lending his voice to the national resistance to the bill, the NLC president, Ayuba Waba, noted that the bill was earlier rejected in 2018 with good reasons. Waba, in a statement in Abuja on Monday titled, Do Not Ambush Nigerians, warned against legislative abuse or betrayal of Nigerians, as this is what it will amount to if the bill is passed or caused to be passed without public engagement and scrutiny. Already, the sentiments expressed against this bill are too grave to be brushed off his head. Now, a playwright and social critic, Professor Wally Shoinka, and organizations such as Afeni Fere, Southern Middle Belt Leaders Forum, the Hanez Ndibu, and the Middle Belt Forum, had on Thursday warned the federal government and the National Assembly against bringing back the bill. And the pan yoruba social cultural organization, Afeni Fere, and its counterpart part in the Niger Delta, the pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, have criticized the federal government and the National Assembly over the reintroduction of the National Water Resources Bill of 2020, rejected by the Eighth Assembly. While the Benin State Governor Samuel Autumn had at the weekend called on the National Assembly to reject the bill, saying it was a ploy to hand over the banks of the rivers to Henspen, Honorable Laureate Professor Walisha Inka had warned President Muhammad Buhari's administration as well against passing the bill. The bill, which seeks to bring all water sources, surface and underground, as well as river banks under the control of the federal government, is seen as anti-federalism, and it also negates the right of Nigerians to natural resources. Autumn had alleged that the bill, in addition to its previous provisions, uh, to its provisions, rather, which are at variance with the Land Use Act, is a disguised land-grabbing legislation designed to grant pastoralists unhindered access to river basins, adjacent marine and coastal environments across the country. He described the bill as another version of Ruga, whose objective is to create grazing areas in the 36 states of the Federation for herders and their livestock. To discuss this matter, this controversy around the reintroduction of the National Water Resources Bill on the breakfast this morning, in the studio is legal practitioner Evans Ufeli. Good to have you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. And we'll have joining us via Zoom the spokesman for Afeni Fere Yinka Udumaking and public affairs analyst Achike Chude. Good to have you, Mr. Udumaking and Chude. Good morning. It's a pleasure. Good morning. Thank you for being a part of this conversation. We shall begin with you, Mr. Odumakin. Uh, could you help recap briefly for us Afeni Ferre's gross with the reintroduction of the bill? Uh, clearly, you know, this thing was done even against the legislative process in the as of reps. When a bill is that rejected and you want to bring it, reintroduce it, there are processes to go through which were ignored in this in this circumstance. It was surreptitiously brought back. Even the speaker of the House of Reps, when he saw the was not it was not the bill that was rejected, was was his first comment, which shows that this thing is being done perniciously to create an uh, untoward situation. Land, as you know, in Nigeria is in, is, in, is in the Land Use Act, which is a constitutional matter. Lands in North State are vested in the governors. But to bring these lands under the president is to give unhindered access to the president to grab lands and give it to whoever he likes. We are opposed to it. We are, we are asking them to shun this bill. And for us in the Southern and Middle Belters Forum, we shall be proceed to the courts hmm. to uh, stop this kind of shenanigans. Right. Okay, I'll come to you, uh, Chude. I know you're still on the line there, but before then, let me speak yeah. to Ufeli, who is on the studio. I mean, 
many are asking why now and you know what's the rationale behind this what's your thoughts well it's not even a question of why now uh, there's an extant legislation on land matters which happens to be the land use act mm -hmm. which its operation scope uh, i've already uh, empower the governors of each state, okay, to hold land in trust for the people. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say land, it includes the coastal areas, uh, the waterways, uh, and the underground waters, okay? Even though uh, Section 1, Subsection 1 of the Mining Act says that the federal government have authorities uh, for resources beneath the earth. Mm -hmm. That is settled. But talking about water, Okay, uh, given the federal government that uh, pass to now, you know, regulate and then uh, uh, issues of water and all that is something that we need to tread careful on because if you look at um, a political and economic struggle, it is one that have left a lot of Nigerians in. Uh, um, lack and want. Right. I mean, if Nigeria is a capital, a poverty capital of the world, by right, that indictment, that economic indictment, mm. uh, we should be looking at areas, the National Assembly should focus on how to make legislation to improve small scale businesses right. that will employ three, four, five persons. The federal government should be looking at how to bring a subsidy to pay the workers in those small scale businesses and then give them loans to increase capacity and develop a viable economy. That is the responsibility. That is what the federal government should be talking about. Right. The federal government should be looking at our educational uh, system. Uh, uh, system and then uh, come up with bills, okay, laws that will help us scale it up, yeah. bring it to 21st century arrangement, have it uh, positively designed for the growth of the economy and the human capital. That is the federal government responsibility. Now, uh, federal government have not been able to do all that, okay? Uh, public health care is an issue <laughs> within the scope. I mean, uh, uh, we should be talking about legislations that will increase capacity in health insurance, that will increase capacity in developing a public health care system that will guarantee the citizen that dividend of democracy. Mm -hmm. Okay, section, that is much talked about. Yeah, section 14, subsection 2 of the 1999 Constitution. It is hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people through which government derives a legitimacy. And the security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. Mm. So, uh, if the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the people, I do not think the federal government sh should keep this diversionary uh, approach mm. on critical economic issues that will advance the course of development in Nigeria. Their focus should be on it and not in trivial issues like water resources. Mm -hmm. Because when you say water resources, it goes beyond just water. We are looking at also aquatic life. We are looking at also resources that are within those space. Yeah, so the federal government will now begin to regulate even fishermen and then those who use boats and then all those who trade across the, the coastal lines and the waters. So mm -hmm. it's something we have to look at. If it runs against federalism, the, the, the present structure of federalism as laid down by Casey where, you know, is completely truncated by that move. Yeah, so right. we should guide against that. Okay, I'll say hold your thoughts. I know you have uh, so much more to say. L let me turn attention to Chude now. Uh, Chude, I'm sure you've heard Mr. Odubaki and also um, Ufeli here in the studio. I'm wondering what worries you the most about this bill? What worries me is the motivation, is the thinking behind it, especially when you a quantum of opposition, single-minded opposition to this bill during the Eighth Assembly, the government was aware of the opposition mm. and was aware that Nigerians were at daggers drawn over this bill. So for the government to come back to insist on, you know, ramming it through the National Assembly is an indication that there is something, perhaps there is something much more insidious and pernicious than we know. You know, because... You see, if democracy is about the people, and the people spoke loudly at that particular point in time, 
then the government would have taken a cue from that and respected itself because the people had spoken loudly. But oh. beyond that, again, is that this is not the only thing the government is sneaking in. The Kama law that has just been passed, you, you know, it's the same thing. One of the most obnoxious aspects of the, is it the social media bill that was supposed to strangulate and emasculate civil society, was also surreptitiously, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, sneaked into uh, the, 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 the Kama bill and was passed. You know, so you worry when you see, you know, the plethora of of uh, of movements that the government is making that are not in any way reflective of, you know, what our values should be, what our motivations as a nation should be. Then it is very very troublesome, you know. And beyond that, again, is the fact that, you know, um, you know, and beyond that, again is the fact that people have been worried over time about, you know, I mean, a lot of people are linking it to the issue of, uh, you know, flanization and the issues of uh, the headsmen and all that. Mm. Because they are saying that the government is trying to provide this land, you know, on behalf of the, 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 the head. Okay. The head uh, dog. I, what the government is expecting we, we're having a bit of challenge with uh, Chuda's connection, but if uh, Mr. Dumakin, if you're still there, and I believe you are, I'll take uh, the next question for you. I'm just wondering, are you in agreement with Governor Tom's allegation that it is a ploy? I think that's what uh, Chuda was refer uh, referencing before his line went off, by the government, it's a ploy by the federal government to hand over the banks of the rivers to headsmen, you know, another version of Ruga, according to him, or are his co uh, comments to be completely discountenanced? No, no, no. I think Governor Trump was uh, quite right that there's a very pernicious agenda to this scheme. And if you, uh, I want you to see the way this, this government is behaving. The government is working assiduously to divide Nigerians. Only last week, I don't know whether, whether, you, whether you noticed it, the Council of State met. After they finished the meeting, the Secretary of the Government, Boss Mustafa, announced that a chairman was announced for the Nigerian Population Commission. He, he, he announced the name of that gentleman to be Mr. Asara. And the name was announced on NTA. A news media on Sahara Reporters has been on here that if the, the officials of this government who want to change that Christian man from Nasarawa to a Muslim, playing a fortnight. You know, before the NTA finished their news, they withdrew the name of the man that the SGF announced and subscribed with a Muslim. Well, it's only a government that well, does not mean well for a policy. I mean, while I respect that, we cannot make conclusions. Let's not make assumptions. I hear, I hear the point that you're making, but uh, let's continue the conversation just to say we, we don't want to make assumptions that this is what it is when we are not completely certain that that's what it is. Oh, we, 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 we are not kids. So, some of us who have been born at night, who are not born yesterday at night, if the sexist to the government announced that this was the council of state decision, and there are speculations that this thing was going to happen. And we saw it happening on, on, on NTA. It may been so suicide. What does that tell you? We are not born yesterday. All right. So when we see pernicious agenda, we can be able to support it. And we have known the kind of issues that this kind of attitude have caused in, in some other countries. This was, this was how they started the whole genocide and wonder. So we know what's going on, we know what we are warning against. Hmm. The agenda is very, very present and we should not allow it to happen. All right, we, we hope we don't go to the path of, tread the path of genocide or war just yet. Uh, yeah. There will not be yes. need for us to be divided to that level. All right, thank you for your thoughts, uh, but stay hanging there, I would say. Let, let me speak with you, I mean, 
th there are obviously clear concerns about this bill. Yes. Um, like uh, Mr. Dumaki and Chude try, uh, were explaining there that there were issues with it when it came in the Eighth Assembly. I'm just wondering, do you think that the National Assembly, the Ninth Assembly, is going to pass this bill, or you know they are likely going to throw it out, just like their predecessor, in the hope that you know everybody, I mean, also most Nigerians are already reacting. Would they listen? Well, okay, you want me to preempt the Ninth Assembly and yeah. benchmark their idiosyncrasy with the Eighth Assembly. That is what I believe the question is about. Mm -hmm. um, I, if you look at the Eighth Assembly, the Eighth Assembly happens to be a balanced assembly. Why did you say so? Balanced because opposition headed the House in a way. So you felt they were always put on okay. their toes. So yeah, so leadership yeah, they, was questioned. Yeah, they were they, they they did a fantastic job because you see we shouldn't have a national assembly that will be uh, that will be subservient to the executive. It's dangerous for democracy because it whittles down check and balances. It truncates section eighty eight and eighty nine of the nineteen ninety nine constitution. The powers of oversight is eroded through lobby, through um, uh, familiarity, and then uh, party partisanship. It whittles the power which the people hold, mm -hmm. okay, or which their representatives hold on their behalf, okay? So, but if you ask me this question, I would say that I can predict the Eighth Assembly, maybe because they are in the past now. Mm. But I'm, I don't trust the Ninth Assembly. I don't trust the Ninth Assembly because on several occasions, the leader of the two house, houses, both the upper house and the lower house, have said that the assignment is not to fight the president or fight the executive. Uh, even though Nigerians have not asked them to go and fight, they, they, they have always been in alignment in many cases, but except for few issues that we have seen that they have really created strong opposition, okay? But on this issue, whether or not they will pass it, um, first of all, let's look at um, the level of opposition in the House, mm -hmm. okay? Mm. It, is not, it, is not, it is not equal, okay? And then if you look at the larger implication of the bill, okay, and uh, the underlining uh, tune of value, people believe it will accrue to the promoters of that bill. Remember, it's an executive bill. An executive bill that does not have the interests of the entire nation at heart should not scale through. Okay, but it's a game of numbers. So it depends on how the executive play the politics of that arrangement. Mm. But what we can do as a larger society is to give feedback, which we are doing. Uh, this general dissatisfaction and then making our utterances and our ideas known to the nation, mm -hmm. okay? In that way, the Ninth Assembly will begin to fill our horse and pick the rhythm of our dissatisfaction and use it as uh, a, a, a drop back mm. to decide on the passage because an executive, once an executive bill passes at the National Assembly, it's as good as law because it came from the presidency or it came from the executive. So once it passed at the National Assembly level, that, that is final. The mm. president would just sign because it Same came thing. from him, it came from the executive. So I think that the National Assembly. We need to walk here, look at this bill. What is this bill about? Ask questions. Is it what we need at this time? Mm -hmm. What are the What are the motivations? What is the intention of the executive? Why do they want this? Is it a way of getting Nigerians to pay more tax using those water resources? Is it a way of getting the water resources properly administered for the larger benefit of society? Is that, is that tenable? Okay, and then the legislations, extant legislations you have, the Land Use Act, mm. okay, which already is even part of the Constitution. So you are not going to have 
a part of the constitution negating another part of the constitution. So Mr. when they look at all these issues, then they will come to a common ground as to whether or not this should be passed. But I don't see them passing this, except, you know, kings lack the caution of common men sometimes, mm. so we cannot predict them. All right. in, in the spirit of taking a step backward, uh, just when you were talking about the Eighth Assembly, and you said the Eighth Assembly was balanced, you know, uh, because the opposition was strong, leadership yes. was questioned. Yes. Uh, what do you make of the Ninth Assembly? Would you say it's balanced or... Not no, bad. the Ninth Assembly is complicit. The, the Ninth Assembly is subservient to the executive. It's very clear. If you look at their actions, uh, they have always not, even though they are conscious of their powers by Section 88 and 89 of the Constitution, they are conscious of their powers, but they have not exercised those powers mm. the way they should on many instances and on many issues. Okay, that's because also uh, many of them are, are new in the house. Many of them are also using the uh, National Assembly and the powers reposed to them by the Constitution to play politics, to play politics of returning to the house at every point in time and order. So some of them don't want to be seen as a black sheep of the house because if you look at some uh, one one of them who who uh, in the Ninth Assembly, Eighth Assembly, uh, talking about Sheo Sani, who voiced out that this is what we earn as uh, you know senators or as uh, lawmakers. This money is what this is what we earn. Before he said that there was a lot of secrets, you know, shrouded in how much does a senator earn. Journalists have asked, lawyers have asked, all Nigerians have asked, nobody. And at the end of the day, you saw what happened to him. Mm. He was, right. you know, in a surreptitiously thrown out of the house and all that. So, there, so many persons are using their position there to play politics, which is dangerous. So, mm. we, we should watch this, yeah, be right. very carefully. Okay, uh, we'll still come back to you, but let me go to Chu uh, there. I mean, Pandev describes the bill as an anti people. Uh, so, I have two questions for you in one. Is that what it is, really, in your opinion? And would the government entertain a bill that will rob the people of their rights, seemingly? Chide, can you hear me? Sorry, can, uh, can you say that again, please? Yeah. Yes. I yes. heard you, but um, not, not too clearly. Okay, so I said yeah. I have two oh, questions uh, for you. Two questions in one. So Pandef describes the bill as anti-people. And I'm asking you, in, 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 is that what it is in its entirety? And would the government entertain a bill that would rob the people of their rights, seemingly, from all the conversations that we are having, seem to be pointing towards that direction? For quite some time now, the country, our country, our beloved country, Nigeria, is not uh, what we used to know her for. Um, all manners of uh, activities on the part of um, uh, unpatriotic citizens have led us to a state of almost a state of near anarchy. And so there is fear and suspicion in the land. Mm. And so what a government does uh, uh, Oh, I'm because sorry. Because uh, the government can show of people to, you know, that belief in nations, that belief, you know, that uh, we're getting from only one as a people. And it is not the business of the government to embark on uh, actions or activities that will be viewed with suspicion by the people. My fear is that in the past few years, the actions of government, especially at the center, have not tended to bring the people together, but have been exceedingly very divisive and viewed with a lot of suspicion. It is not as if we don't want to believe in our government, because we have no other country than Nigeria. But the reality is that, you see, and that's why when a government comes afraid and intolerant of criticism, it begins to see its friends as enemies and its enemies are strengths. And what do I mean? Those people who criticize the government on a continuous basis are those people who are actually in love with that government, are people who actually want the government to begin to move in the right direction. You know, why people who continue to hail the government 
even when things are not moving on well in the country, are the actual enemies of the government. Hmm. You know, so I believe that we are playing a role in ensuring, you know, that the government is pointed along the right path. So what we are seeing today, we talk about Pandev, you talk about uh, Feni Feri, you talk about, you know, uh, Ohaneze. Then not only that, you forgot to mention, you know, even civil society organizations that have risen up in mm -hmm. arms against this. Not too long ago, I think was it was yesterday or two days ago, Guardian gave, you know, uh, an, an editorial, you know, where, sorry, put up an editorial that was very scathing and deprecating of the actions of the government uh, with regards to this uh, matter. Same thing with uh, uh, no less a personality than Wale Shunika. So when you see the people moving in this direction, gravitating in this direction, taking a common position, you realize that there is trouble. And I, it's even beyond the government. The members of the National Assembly are from constituents, are from constituencies. They are from the people. And so they have to show, not just in words, but in deeds, that they are beholding on the people, that they are less, ready to listen to the people that are responsible for bringing them to power. And so if they are looking at the grand soul of opinion, then there's only one way the Ninth Assembly can go with regards to this uh, matter. And that is to kill it with immediate effect and automatic alacrity, the way they did with the COVID-19 bill, which was grossly anti-people and, 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 and the reflection of all the terrible things about the democracy that we've been having for quite some time in this country, yeah. the same way they also killed the uh, anti-social uh, uh, media, I mean, the social media bill and all that. So this is, is what we you know, expect them to do. But beyond that, I mean, lastly, let me just make this point. Yeah, that discussions in the polity point. over the years have been about small governments, have been about the need for fiscal responsibility, I mean, fiscal federalism, control of resources and all that. So this action, where the government wants to continue uh, to power grab, is complete, complete variance with the political discourse that all Nigerians have been having for quite some time about the need for us to have a smaller government while more power devolves to the people. Because mm -hmm. we have not gotten... The, the experimentation with the, with the kind of go governance we have, you know, for quite some time now has not yielded any positive results. So for the government to continue to want to expand this power is something beyond, beyond belief. All and right. that is why a lot more people are actually suspicious of the action of uh, the government. The government needs to do much more. All right. To tell us I... that we are all citizens, it that is... we are all, that we all have uh, equal, that we are all equal before the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All right. It's interesting there how you mentioned uh, the beats of suspicion. It's not like Nigerians don't want to believe leadership, but there is an element of suspicion that seems to be shrouding uh, every other thing. And so the questions that uh, you know, many Nigerians are raising. Let me go to Mr. Odumakin now. Uh, the bill which fails to get a concurrent passage by both houses in the 8th Assembly has passed the second reading in the House of Representatives and has been referred to a House committee. Should the Ninth Assembly go ahead with this bill? What then? Well, clearly, if they, if they, go, if they go ahead with this bill, like you are asking today, they will show clearly they are anti-people. Hmm. And that will not be good for a National Assembly. Uh, they should not. They should throw it away immediately. Uh, because uh, the large swell of opinion against this bill it is clear that they are working. This bill is being worked by the by the presidency for a tiny a tiny section of the country. It's an unpopular bill, mm -hmm. which they want to ram through the throats of the country. Uh, it will not forbode any good. And if they love this country, they should be more uh, subservient to the people than to the dictates of the executive. Right. Which would Right. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that uh, intervention. Let me now find out from uh, Ufeli who's in studio here. I, I want to read a line from what uh, Professor Wole Inka said yesterday while warning. He said, if the bill passed into law, well, if it is passed into law, that it will hand the president absolute control over the nation's entire resources, um, both over and underground. 
So my, my question for you will be, can you highlight the concerns that might, you know, necessitate this one, especially when it says the entire resources, you know, yeah. of the nation? Yeah, it will, it will be counterproductive and it will run against the extant laws, the Land Use Act that we have. Because by the time you give the president that kind of power, we're talking about a federal state, okay, where the powers at the center is supposed to be whittled down to the component units. Mm. We're talking about a situation where states should have their own security apparatus, police force, army, navy, whatever. States should manage it, manage their resources and do all that. But now, it seems that we're we are trying to build more power at the center as against the component unit. If you give the president the power to have raw source, water resources and all that, the citizens who have found their ways on how to get water mm. because the, the, the government have failed them, okay, through a borehole and all that. Now you are giving that power to the president. So the person who builds a house, buy land, perfect it through the state government, yeah. get a CEO and all that, may require, may require the assent and uh, permission of the president to, to, to dig a borehole in that. That, that. that is the larger implication. Mm. And also that um, if the government have not been able to provide water, even though there is a ministry of water resources, okay, why, why should the government interfere Again, with when, <laughs> when you have to do something. Yeah, the citizens' own, uh, the citizens have devised ways, okay, to fill in the void that the federal government have left. Why interfere? Why truncate that process? So that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then the, the fishermen who live uh, uh, by the coastal areas, uh, who are poor, who uh, rely on fishing to train their children and send them to schools. Mm -hmm. Complete dependence uh, on uh, that. Uh, so, so they also need the, the present permission or something of that semblance mm -hmm. to have their daily bread. <coughs> and be able to feed their children. So you see, the implication of this is that when your water is a natural cause, okay, and because it's a natural cause, the administration should be customary, should be local, mm. okay, and then there shouldn't be any bottleneck or any kind of high-handedness or procedures to get it to the people or to give the people the leeway to have it used the way they want. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, lastly, let me talk to Chude in the spirit of uh, solution finding. What other actions can be taken beyond this general condemnation? You know, everyone is complaining to compel a possible retraction of the bill. Chude, are you there? Did you get my question? Yeah, well, yeah, well um, I think um, it's... Is that for me, Achike? Yes, please. Should I Hello, for is you? that for me? Yes, that's the question. The question is for you. What more can okay. be done for a possible retraction okay, yes. of this bill? Thank you. Yeah, I think, look, we have had uh, uh, these issues in the past with regards to other bills that were contemplated by the National Assembly. And we moved in a particular direction. We were unified, and I'm talking about uh, civil society. We were all unified. Mm. And so... Uh, we are not having a greater unity of purpose over this particular bill uh, because uh, that means that we have had in the past. You can see that everybody is united. I just told you that a national newspaper as reputable as the Guardian editorial did uh, a very serious uh, uh, opinion on this matter and deprecated the government in very harsh. You know, and so we need to continue to have this kind of uh, uh, resistance. Uh, mm -hmm. to this uh, bill and uh, to let members of National Assembly know that the, the entire people, the entire people, uh, you know, are behind, uh, are generally opposed to it. And it is only when that happens, you know, that the grass wall of opinion uh, is built against the government that we realize that, uh, that they will then realize that uh, there is very little that can be done, that they must yield to the voice of the people mm -hmm. ultimately. Uh, because that is the essence. That is what government, you know, uh, so governance hard. is all about. That is what representation is all about. The people that are the National Assembly are nothing without those who have put them there. 
I, I, you know, I, I, that is the way I think it ought to be. And then the government is expected uh, to uh, respond in positive ways uh, to, 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 to realize that uh, it is acting on behalf of uh, the people of this country. Right, uh, and, uh, and that it cannot continue to act at variance, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, with uh, the position of uh, the Nigerian people. All right. Yeah. It's a good way to really wrap it, where you have put it, that the government will listen and yield to the will of the people. I'd like to say thank you so very much, uh, spokesman of the Afeni Fere Group, uh, Mr. Odumakin. Thank you for your time. And, of course, uh, Chude uh, Achike, public affairs analyst, for your contributions also. We see where this leads us to. Do keep safe out there, both of you. And the breakfast will continue shortly after this break. Stay with us.